Well, so Alex, Jed, welcome along to, to Riyadh. I'm sure you're both very much excited for what's, uh, what's to come this weekend. Absolutely. It's uh, one of the great advantages of uh, having a really good horse, you know, and we never dreamed of when, we, when a bred uh, spirit dancer would get as far as this, you know, but we're so excited about it. And of course, after Bahrain, we're, we're quite optimistic. And Jed Bahrain was a, a great trip and I thought a great performance as well. He was very strong towards the finish and he came well clear. Oh, he did, yeah. When he came round the bend and uh, started moving through, I think that was fantastic to see that sight. And the way he pulled away, yeah, it was a bit of a pinch yourself moment, to be honest. And so, Alex, this horse has been around for a while. He's, he's now a seven year old, but last year he seemed to keep on improving and take his, his form to a new level. Yeah, well, I had a long chat with Richard about last year. We had a little problem when he was three years of age, you know, and uh, we got over that, and it's just got better and better. You know, it's, it's not a lot of racing, you know, mm. if you look at it. Uh, and that's what Richard always keeps saying to me. He says, look, this horse is, it can race a lot more than it's been doing. And uh, so we're getting the benefit of, even although you're saying it's seven years of age, it's not a lot of racing. And we almost saw a new dynamic in, in Bahrain. He was almost a, a bit of a, a York specialist. All of his best form was there, but he showed that he can travel and produce it elsewhere. Yeah, he did. I mean, uh, obviously, to get to the invite to Bahrain, he produced the goodies at, uh, at York. And, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a terrific horse. And I'm so proud for Alex, who's, you know, so special that he's bred, bred, bred him. So, out of Franco. And you've been involved in both jumps and, and flat racing to a very high level. Yeah. How much are you enjoying this, this international element at the moment? Oh, well, that, uh, it's, it's a, something, something we didn't expect. You know, that, I mean, I was, uh, I've been to Dubai International some years back, and, you know, you say to yourself, I wonder what it's like to have, actually have a horse involved in it. So we've got one, and we're enjoying it. Sorry, in the hospitality. Oh, and, you fantastic. know, in Saudi, has been excellent, yeah. and uh, it's great to be here, really, yeah. you know, and... Bahrain, we've been well looked after him, it's amazing. Well, yeah. It's been great. And it must be very excited to be here mixing it with the uh, the Americans, the Japanese, Aiden yeah, O'Brien's yeah. got his runners here as well. It's, it's a truly international event. Well, Aiden's got his best horses here today. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but, um, no, it's good because when you, you're competing with like, so Aiden O'Brien, you know you're competing with, uh, with the very best. And you see how Japanese have improved over the years, they're buying all the, the best mares, and you know that. And they are really having a go. So, you know, you're up against the best, and I think we're enjoying that. And during your working career, racing was always a good escape for you, but you seem to have to really immersed yourself in it to since, honest, since then. To be honest, we, around about 95, I remember my wife saying, you, You're going to kill yourself because there was so much into the game, into Football United, that um, my whole day was absorbed in what the club were doing. And then I said to my wife one day, do you fancy going to the racing? He says, where'd you get that from? I said, well, you're saying I'm doing too much at United, I need to start doing something else. And what I did do, uh, I was in, down in number 10 Downing Street with Gordon Brown doing a thing for apprentices. And uh, he says, what are you reading at the moment? I says, I'm not reading much at the moment. I said, I bought a book in Boston about the American generals in the Civil War, he says, I'll send you tapes in it. And I got right into that. You know, he sent me his 30 tapes right. on the Civil War. And uh, I got into that, and so the wife, she was delighted. I was cutting myself off a bit from the actual football side of it. And then when I went to to the race in Cheltenham, I met this fantastic man, John Mohern and Desi Scahill. Yeah. And I had dinner with them, lunch with them, and I got hooked in it. And, and she says, you want to buy all the horses. <laughs> I'm trying. Right. <laughs> but you've enjoyed great success today, haven't you, Jed? With especially uh, in the UK with, with jumps horses with the likes of Paul Nichols. Yeah, I think our first entry uh, into joint ownership was with what a friend, um, and what a friend he was to us both. Uh, he sort um, of got our appetite for winning, and uh, with Paul, yeah, Paul Nichols, champion trainer, of course. We, and uh, well, at the time when I, we bought a horse, he was number two, so. Number two wants to be number one, and that's where Paul is. So, yeah, and clans the oboe. Well, he, he owes us nothing, does he? Yeah, King George's yeah, and yeah. the Irish Gold Cup. So it's been a fantastic journey, and we, we don't want it to stop. <laughs> no, the tour continues, and I think some people might be surprised to know that you're actually involved in the breeding side as well. How big is that operation for you? Well, it was um, by accident in a way. Um, I got this. I was over in uh, Germany, uh, Andres Voller's place, and. Uh, 
and he, uh, he put that idea in my mind. I bought a horse from him, uh, the mayor, uh, Queen's Dream. And uh, this friend of mine uh, says, I suggested this operation down in Hemel Hempstead. And I says, well, we'll have a go. And it's been great. And they are fantastic people. They're, they're looking after your horses really well. We got a foal last week okay. uh, by Stradisverius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another great, you know, horse. So yeah, go, go, the Gold Cup at Ascot in what, 20, 2028, here we come. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your first visit here, racing to Alex, but you've, you've been to Saudi Arabia in yep. the past? We came over 14 years ago. Was, uh, there was a famous uh, player that had 150 international caps, and uh, we got this invite to come and play. And uh, the king, I remember, bought 80,000 tickets and gave them all to the, to the people, you know, and it was just fantastic. And we were really well well looked after. It was a bit cold, mind you. I must say, I always remember that. And uh, yeah, that, we, we enjoyed that. It was, it was. I went to this old village. It was. It was going back hundreds of years ago. You know, it was fantastic yeah. how people lived in these days. You know. And that's one of the great things when you come out to the Middle East, Jed, to to sort of sell the Middle Eastern story back around the world. The the culture and heritage is, is a big part of the racing. Oh yeah, it's fantastic to see the different cultures. And um, yeah, it's, and it, to spread the gospel, yeah, it's, it's great and fantastic. And we saw you guys celebrating big after the win for Spirit Dancer in Bahrain. Are we expecting the same? You mean my broken rib? <laughs> Did you break a rib? <laughs> <laughs> Grab me and jump on me. Not guilty. I'm going, dead, dead, dead. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> By the way, it was a hundred yards for the, the winning line. <laughs> I don't normally celebrate uh, that quickly until it's over the line, but I did that day because oh, he was, was coming it through. Was, we knew it was he came through like yeah. a train, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. fantastic, yeah. Well, hopefully no broken ribs on Saturday, but a big uh, celebration if he was to win. I don't mind if we win, <laughs> but we get a great jockey too. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, Richard's done so well for nah, him. Yeah, fingers crossed. Nice well, great Thanks to see you both here and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.